If you're not excited about MRI, at least the scanner will excite the protons in your body to generate an image of the inside of your head, for example, like this one. Um, is it funny? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny. And you're laughing. <laughs> we are here at the Advanced MRI Facility in St. Thomas's, London, and behind me there is a 7 Tesla scanner. It's one of five in the UK, actually. So they are quite rare. They are um, really expensive because they have really strong magnets inside of them and it's quite hard to build these and make them good for scanning purposes. When I run my experiments, I usually don't scan humans because it would take way too long and they might move. Instead, I scan one of these phantoms here. So this is the fancy phantom. You can see it has multiple tubes inside of it and each of these tubes contain a different liquid that has different properties and that will show up on my MRI scans. So this phantom I would use for initial testing. Uh, it's just a plastic sphere filled with a gel. So there's nothing fancy about it, but um, on the plus side, it's very uniform. But in MRI, we do excite the proteins in our body. We obtain a response from them. And from that response, we're gonna reconstruct an image of the insides of our body, like the one that you can see behind me. But you guessed it, there is a catch. And that is that um, the excitation with the radio waves is non-uniform at seven Tesla. And you can see that the image behind me, there are some areas that are quite bright and others that are really dark. And the problem is, is that if a diagnosis by radiologists is based on contrast, it can't be done if contrast changes in the image. In my research, I have a different approach, which is to take multiple images with um, different non-uniform excitation patterns. And you can imagine that if you average over all of them, the overall excitation is then uniform again, which makes diagnosis possible.